Thank you for watching this video. My name is Yi Heng Shi. The title of our paper is Dynamic Low Light Imaging with Quanta Image Sensors. From photographic film to CMOS sensors, camera technology has experienced several changes over the past century. Cameras today are required to have higher resolution and smaller pixels, which limit the sensing area of the sensor. As the size decreases, fewer photons will arrive at the sensor, so there exists an intrinsic limitation on the SNR the sensors can achieve. Quanta image sensors, or in short QIS, is a candidate solution to this problem. It is proposed by Eric Fossum in 2005. This new type of sensor has single photon sensitivity and low bit depths. It has very high frame rate and spatial resolution, which allow us to first oversample in space and time and then reconstruct the images using very carefully designed algorithms. Currently, there are two varieties of QIS. One is based on single photon avalanche diode and the other is based on CMOS image sensor or CIS. In this work, we use the CIS-based QIS. The objective of this paper is using QIS to image dynamic scenes in extremely low light environments. Although QIS is at an advantage to handle low light imaging comparing to CMOS sensors, this is still a challenging problem for two reasons. First, at a photon level of one photon per pixel, no matter how good our sensor is, the random shot noise will put a fundamental limit to the image quality due to the Poisson statistics. This shot noise that contaminates the image is significantly heavier than the heavy noise discussed in the denoising literature. Second, we need to deal with the coexistence of noise and motion. To denoise in low light, we usually need to have multiple observations of the same scene, but this is not the case because in our problem, the scene is dynamic. On the other hand, if we want to first align the frames, it is also non-trivial because of the heavy noise. In the bottom figure, we show results of a motion-based method kernel prediction network KPN and a single frame RedNet denoiser. We can see both methods have their limitations. Our goal is to leverage the strength of both. We summarize the work related to our paper as the following. The majority of existing denoising algorithms are designed for CIS. Most of the classical methods among them are based on a single image, such as BN3D and non-local mean. Although we can extend them to denoise multiple images, such as BN4D, the results will still be noisy because the short noise is so heavy that it might be mistakenly treated as image structures. For previous QIS methods including ADMM image reconstruction, non-iterative image reconstruction, and plug-and-play fixed-point convergence, the light level they consider are higher than that in our paper. In the literature of deep learning-based reconstruction methods, including learning to see in the dark and seeing motion in the dark, we found KPN the most relevant to us. However, as we will present later, the performance of KPN is not as satisfactory in the extreme noise conditions that we are interested in. There are also deep learning methods for QIS, but they are not designed for dynamic low-light scenes. If we apply a low-light denoising method such as QIS-Net to our problem, it will very likely yield blurry results. In short, the previous work can either solve the denoising problem when the scene is static or solve the aligning problem when the noise is mild. Imaging dynamic scenes with heavy noise remains an open problem. Since the kernel prediction networks and denoising networks can handle either clean dynamic sequences or noisy static sequences, we would like to leverage their strengths to address the dynamic low-light imaging. Therefore, we propose a student-teacher learning framework to solve this problem. This framework consists of three components, a teacher network for motion, another teacher network for denoising, and a student network that we are going to use eventually. The motion teacher based on kernel prediction is pre-trained using clean and dynamic image sequences. The denoising teacher based on image denoiser network is pre-trained on noisy and static image sequences. These two teachers are fixed when we train a student, so they are marked as not trainable in this framework. Our goal by using this framework is to train a student network by transferring knowledge from the teachers to the student. This student network has two encoders. Given noisy and dynamic image sequences, we want the two encoders to extract two sets of features, the motion features 
and the denoising features. Having these two sets of features, the decoder of the student network will be able to reconstruct the clean images. To achieve this, we designed three loss functions. The first loss is the motion similarity. When a student sees noisy dynamic training samples, the motion teacher sees the respective clean dynamic samples. This pair of motion encoders then generate a pair of features. By minimizing the motion similarity loss between this pair of features, we ensure that the student can extract similar features as the teacher. These features will have a good representation of the motion information, using which we can do a better reconstruction. Likewise, the second loss is a denoising similarity. We also want the student's denoising encoder to behave similarly as the denoising teacher's encoder. Finally, we have a decoder to translate the motion and denoising features back to an image. The third loss function we use is the standard mean square error loss to measure the difference between the reconstruction and the ground truth. The overall loss function is the weighted combination of the three losses, where the weights are tunable parameters. Using the student-teacher framework, we make the two teachers transfer their knowledge to the student during the training step. During testing, only the student network is used. We use synthetic data to train the networks. We remark that such a synthesis approach works because our simulated QS data matches with the real measurements. The datasets we use are Pascal VOC 2008 dataset for global motion and Stanford background dataset for local motion. Each image sequence we generate contains 8 frames, and the patch size is 64 by 64. To simulate noisy data, we use a QIS imaging model shown as equation 1. The light level is controlled by the sensor gain alpha. To create global motion, we shift the patches according to a random continuous camera motion. The number of pixels traveled by the camera ranges from 7 to 35 pixels across the 8 frames. This is approximately 1 meter per second to 5 meters per second. To create local motion, we fix the background and shift the foreground using translations and rotations. The translations is implemented in the same way as that of global motion and the rotation is implemented by rotating the foreground by 0 to 15 degrees. After training on simulated QRS data, we test the proposed method on both simulated and real QRS data. We first show the results on simulated data. In the top figure, the photon level is 2 photons per pixel. The magnitude of the global motion is 28 pixels across 8 frames. From the results, we observe that our proposed method can remove the noise as well as preserving details. To quantitatively analyze the performance, we plot two sets of curves showing at the bottom using linear global motion. In the first plot, we fix the photon level at 2 photons per pixel and show PSNR as a function of the motion magnitude. In the second plot, we show PSNR versus photon level at a motion magnitude of 4 pixels. According to the two plots, our proposed method achieves higher PSNR comparing to the three competing methods. This suggests that our method can solve the motion and noise dilemma, which is difficult for previous methods. Here we show some results on other types of global motions and local motion. We also verify the results using real QoS data. We collect the data using a prototype camera GigaJot Pathfinder. From the analysis on real data, we have similar findings as on simulated data. In conclusion, we proposed a solution to the dynamic low-light imaging problem in this paper. This problem has important impacts on many applications that require taking images in dark environments, for example, autonomous driving, surveillance, and healthcare. CIS has fundamental limitations due to their inability to count photons, we therefore studied QIS as an alternative solution. We developed a method using deep neural network with a new student-teacher training protocol. We showed with experimental results that the proposed method outperforms existing methods. This work is supported in part by USNSF. We thank the supports from Professor Eric Fossum at Dartmouth College and GigaJob Technology.